Node.js v15 is here. But wait, I just upgraded my project to Node 12 and you are saying a new version of Node is released? I haven't even upgraded my project to Node 14. Should I directly go to Node 15 now? But wait, what are the breaking changes? Also, what are the new features? Is there any benefit of even upgrading? Should I even think of it? Don't worry about it. I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about Node.js latest version and if you need to upgrade to it and what are the breaking changes and what are the new features. So stay tuned in this video. This is Pranav from the Immigrant Programmers. Before we get into the nitty gritties of Node 15 and see each and every feature in detail, I just want to give you an overall summary of what are the major changes. So first one is we have an abort controller. It's basically an experimental implementation, but it's very useful. It basically helps us to reject or abort any kind of promise based API. More on this later. There's a new NPM version major release uh, that came out and it has some changes in the package block JSON format and also it uh, introduced NPM workspaces. But also more on that later. Apart from that, the V8 JavaScript engine has been upgraded to 8.6. Those who don't know, 8.4 was already released in Node 14, so it's not new. It's just some new features and there's no breaking changes, so you don't need to worry about it. But the new features are really cool, so stay tuned. Before we dive any deeper into Node 15, let me first address the elephant in the room. Do you need to upgrade your project to Node 15? And the simple answer is no. Don't be surprised. It's an odd numbered release line and Node.js 15 will not be promoted to LTS. We have nothing against Node 15 though. It's just Node, whenever it comes out with an odd number release, it is not going to pr be promoted to LTS. Whenever it comes out with an even number release, that is what you should really upgrade your applications to because it will go to long-term support and it will stay for a long time. As a side note, I came to know about a very important thing that you need to do so that your code doesn't break. And that is to destroy the like button on this video. As promised, let's start with the bot controller. It's basically a very cool new experimental implementation that allows us to cancel any kind of promise based API. Now, why I say this is very cool, it's because before this, we could only unsubscribe to the API calls we have already made but we didn't really abort them. They were they still executed. We just didn't listen to the response. With this, we can actually abort any kind of API request. It can be a response body type, or it can even be a stream, which we can cancel. And I'll show you a very cool example of canceling a stream, but in which we'll be basically requesting a video, which would be about 180 MBs, and we would abort the operation in the middle, and you will see all of that in action in this video. So let's see abort controller in action. Here I'm going to download a video and then I'm going to abort the API and you will actually see that we don't receive a response afterwards. The API is actually aborted. On the other hand, if I don't click, as you can see, if I don't click the cancel button, if I don't abort this operation, what it will do is it will download the whole video. As you can see, it has already downloaded about 60 MBs or 70 MBs already and it will soon finish the video as you can see it just finished we can play the video and do all sort of things but we can also abort it as i promised and if and you will see that okay it's still in progress i cancel it and download abort it it's as simple as that let's go through the basic code real quick in order to actually understand what's happening behind the scenes so first we need to create a controller using the abort controller constructor and then grab a reference to its associated signal using the abort controller.signal property. As you can see, we have stored it in a var. Now, we have two buttons in the HTML, which is basically a download button and an abort button, as you, as you saw in the example. In the download button, we add in an event, which basically listens to a click event. And whenever that happens, it starts fetching the video. On the other hand, the abort button also listens to a click event but it actually aborts the controller and then it prints download aborted as you saw in the console in the example I just showed you a few seconds ago. So this is very basic implementation and now I'm sure you understand at least a little bit of it 
as I said, it's still experimental. So I don't recommend you start using this in your production applications. But yeah, you would agree with me that it's really a nice feature. Next, what do we have here is V7 of the NPM CLI. I won't dive deep into the into this change because this actually needs a video of its own i would just give you a brief overview of what change and what are the new features and those who don't know what's npm it's used by millions of developers it has millions of libraries and it has like about 75 billion downloads a month so you really need to check it out the new features are basically it introduced a workspace which now helps us to manage multiple projects within a singular top level package also, now it automatically installs the peer dependencies. In NPM 7, developers will need to manage their own peer dependencies. This might be a breaking change for a few applications. Now, if you're thinking what a peer dependency is, I highly recommend you to go through the docs, but I'll give you a brief overview. Let's say you have a library or you have a NPM package that is published and it has some peer dependencies. Now, before this uh, release, that package had did not have to install any of the peer dependency any application or any service who uses your package needs to install it I know it's already getting a little complicated and that's why I said it needs a video of its own maybe in the next video I'll explain more about this in detail for now I'll go back to node and discuss uh, some other new features that were released enough of the complicated stuff let me show you some things that you can start using as a developer in your day-to-day -day life the first one is promise.any. Promise.any basically takes a number of promises and it resolves as soon as one of the promises is fulfilled. Now, basically you must be thinking that it is the exact opposite of promise.all. In promise.all, we used to pass number of promises, but it only used to resolve when each and every promise that we have passed is resolved. In this case, we wait for any one of them to resolve. So it's exact opposite of promise.all. Now you must be thinking what happens if all of the promises we have passed to promise.any fail. Well, in that case, it will return an aggregate error, which is a new subclass of error, which is also released with V8 8.6. More on that later. Let's see the example over here. We have three promises and the first one is rejected. As you can see, the second one resolves in 100 milliseconds and the third one resolves in 500 milliseconds. Now we group them in an array and we pass in promise.any and as we have already discussed it will resolve as soon as the first promise is resolved and will return us the, the value of the promise that has resolved the first one. So when we run it you can see that it prints quick. It gives us quick. So basically it didn't wait for the one with 500 milliseconds delay. It didn't reject because one of the promises was, was rejected. It basically returned us the value of the first promise that was completed successfully. So I think this is really cool and you can start using this as soon as you upgrade. Last but not the least, we have string.replaceAll. This is a feature that I've been personally waiting since a long time and I'm disappointed that it did not come earlier. But anyways, string.replaceAll basically matches the pattern it has a first argument and replaces that string with the string we passed in the second argument. So as you can see in this example, we have a string over here which has the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, etc, etc. And we say that replace all dog with monkey. Before this release, we just had replace which would find the first one and replace it and return us the string. In this case, we would find each and every occurrences of the word dog in this example and it will be replaced by a monkey. So it's really cool as you can see it replaces both of them. In the, in the first example it replaces the dog with a ferret and the second example with monkey but you get the idea. Finally Node has been with us since a little over 10 years now and they have done nothing but improve themselves and they plan to do the same in the next 10 years and they have already laid out a roadmap of how, what they are going to do in the next 10 years. This time they took it to a whole another level. This time they started taking surveys of the contributors as you can see here and they started taking into consideration the changes or the features that are the most requested. 
If you are interested into this, I will add a link to this in the description down below so that you can read it and also maybe predict some of the features that might come in the next releases because now they have already started taking the voting into consideration. So we can have a brief overview, a basic idea of what we are going to have in the next future releases. So thank you guys for making to the end of this video. I really appreciate it. I want you to comment down below what your favorite feature was. My personal favorite was a bot controller and my second favorite was string.replaceAll method that was added. I'm really happy about it. I want to know what your favorite was. So please comment down below. Also destroy the like button, hit subscribe and until next time.